Uh, my name is Mara Stoika. I'm a .NET developer on the runtime team, and I'm also part of the open source apps team. Um, I will talk to you today about .NET apps that we have built that are open source and they're available for you to use. So let's look real quick at the agenda. So first, I'm going to give you a quick, quick, quickish introduction into the open source apps. And then we'll go ahead and talk about what apps are there, and I'll give you demos of all the different apps. And I'll end with talking about what we're planning for the, the near and the not so near future. So, a super quick introduction into the apps. What are open source apps? Well, they are apps that the runtime and JavaScript apps that are built open source and they're released in the GitHub repository and available to you. They are complete applications. What does that mean, complete? Well, we have built them as close as possible to production ready as we could. So we started just like any developer would start with a set of requirements and we built the application, we added features, we tested it, we went back, we iterated over it until the app was as feature complete and as production ready as we could possibly make it. So, so why I'm saying this is because a lot of times we get the question, are these like demos? Are they samples? You know, what are they? No, they're full applications. They're something that you would build in your own organization. That's kind of the way we were thinking about it when we designed these. They're also tested. We went, like I mentioned, through several iterations of testing these apps, making sure we get them as bug-free as possible so you, so you can take them and not have to spend a lot of time testing these applications. Um, now, the next thing is, I think, important. They follow ArcGIS best practices. We've heard from our developer that working with our API sometimes is hard. We've heard that the samples are great, but the samples don't really show how to put it all together. They give you a piece of something, right? They say, okay, here's how you do identify. Great, but how do I do identify and then do also this and then show routing and then do like, how do you put it all together? What's the best way to architect an ArcGIS application? That's what these apps are for. They're supposed to show you how to do that in a way that us, that we would do it at Esri. They are also maintained and improved. So we don't just write them, put them out there, and forget about them. We update them with every new release of ArcGIS. We go back and we add enhancements. Sometimes we have to put in workarounds because there's an issue with the API and we can't do something, so we create a workaround, but then as soon as that issue is resolved, we go back and we remove the workaround and we put in the, you know, the proper way to do what we were trying to do from the start. Um, we also update them to the latest version of uh, Visual Studio and the latest version of Xamarin and so forth. Um, and probably the most important thing, they're free to use. These are apps that are free for you to download, to use however you want. Um, there's a link at the very bottom for how to get to them. I will also show you how to get to them um, from uh, the website. Actually, let me do that right now. And I should probably just switch to this machine so I don't have to keep looking sideways. Um, so if you're on the developer site, everybody familiar with that by now, hopefully? You go to your favorite SDK, .NET, and you click on that, and it will take you to the SDK page, and if you scroll down just a tiny bit, there's a link for open source apps. Once you click on that, here are all of the different apps. Now, they're not just filtered to .NET. We don't really have enough to filter them. So we just left everything. Also, 
as a developer, we're sometimes polyglots, right? We write multiple languages. So maybe the app doesn't exist in .NET, but it exists in iOS. Well, you can read, you can figure it out from there what the app does, and maybe you get inspired from that. Or maybe you can just take the iOS app and build an iOS app. So we decided to just leave them all on this page and not filter them. Now, once you're on this page and you want to see, okay, let's find out more about the data collection for .NET. Click on that, and there is a lot of documentation, and I'm not going to scroll through it and make you dizzy, but there's a lot of documentation about how the app works, how to set it up, how to configure it. These apps are not just open source, they're also configurable. They're, I'm sorry, they're also generic, which means Sometimes all you have to do is just change something in the configuration file and the app will work with your data. So before you go in and dig into the code, look at the configuration and see, maybe you just don't even need to dig into the code. Uh, but if you do want to get in, dig into the code, there's the link to the source code on GitHub. And you can, uh, you can go ahead and fork it and work with it, make it, make it your own. Let me see if I can get that presentation over here. That's not it. All right. I'm not going to try because. Okay. The big question, right? Why are we giving these apps away for free? What's, why, why? Well, we want to showcase the use of our APIs. We want to show you what is possible to do with our APIs. Sometimes that's hard to, to know just from looking at the API reference. So if you have an app that's already built with the, with the API, you can say, oh, okay, I can do this and I can do that. I would like, I like that. I, I want to build an app that does that. The second reason is to help you jumpstart development. Sometimes it's hard to start from scratch. Why not start from an application that's already built and you just add the extra functionality that you need or remove what you don't need from it? And um, to help demonstrate best practices, right? We were talk I was just talking a minute ago about how the samples, they show you functionality, but they don't show you how to put it all together in a, in a way that follows best practices. These apps do. Maybe you don't need any of these apps. Maybe you do end up writing your app from scratch, but you can still use one of these apps as an example on how to follow best practices. Hey, how does Esri do MVVM with, uh, with uh, the API? Well, look at especially the data collection app. That's a good example of using uh, MVVM. What's the catch, right? There is no catch. These apps are really 100% free. You can get the source code, download it, change it, sell it. We don't care. It's yours. It's Apache 2.0 license. If you read through the license, that's what it says. You can do whatever you want. You don't even have to give us credit for it. OK, but how do we make money from it, right? So. You, if you use one of these apps and you use data from S3 or you use routing, for example, or you use any of the licensed part of the API that, that requires you know, a paid license, some of, some of the apps have that in them. Some of them have routing, for example, and routing uses credits and so forth. So that's how S3 makes money, not from the apps, but from you would, have, you would build these apps anyway, right? Except you would have to start from scratch. Now you have these apps that you can start from. So yes, they are really, really free. OK. Let's look at some of these apps. So the first I'm going to start with is Indoor Routing. Um, this is an app that was built with the Xamarin um, the iOS Xamarin API. It is, um, it's not Xamarin Forms, it's Xamarin Native. It offers, uh, I'm gonna run it over here so I should probably turn around. It offers geocoding and routing indoors. It's working with an indoor data set. 
Uh, it's got feature layers, graphic overlays. Um, it works 100% offline. When you start the app, it asks you to download a mobile map package. It uses device location if you turn it on and if you have a uh, device uh, location enabled, um, sorry, um, indoor positioning enabled in your in your building. And there's a link to the source code on GitHub. If you did not catch the link to the presentation in the very beginning, I will put it up right at the end. I have a, a tiny URL set up so you can just get to this presentation and get to the links. So, no, all right, I'm terrible at I'm not a Mac person, so if you see me fumbling, that's why. So I'm going to go ahead and run it real quick and, and give you a quick demo of it. So this is the Esri campus in Redlands, and the buildings are from the Esri campus. I can zoom in, and as I get in close enough, I get um, floors turned on. I can switch between floors with a floor picker. I have set up my home location to this office. I can also search if I want. So I can search for, let's see, a conference room in the M building. Oh, it's an atrium. Let's actually do a conference room because an atrium is kind of weird. Let's do that. There we go. And I can route to this. I can route from, by default, it picks my, my home office that I have set up because most likely I'm probably going to start from there, but you can, of course, change that. And I can hit route me, and it gives me the route from where I, the, the office that I had set up as my, as my home office along outside through, the, uh, through another building, actually, surprisingly enough, and up the stairs. Let's go and zoom into this so you can see. and to the conference room. Um, let's clear that. I can just tap on an office and do an identify and it brings up uh, you know, information about it. I can also turn off routing. Say you want to be able to look at offices but you don't want routing, you don't have a network, you just have the data. You can also do that. You can disable routing, and then um, you won't use that. Um, there is use location services. If I was on campus, I could turn this on, and you would find me in the office where I was in. And that's about it about with this application. Now, as far as the data that this application uses, um, you can find all that and how to set up the data for it on the documentation page for the application. Uh, it, this data came from CAD, and there is a CAD to GIS utility that was put together by the indoor team, actually, uh, before they were the indoor team. And that's what this data uses. So this data is very close to, if not exactly, what the indoor team uses for um, the ArcGIS indoors. So. If you have data that you have it set up for their application, you can probably put it in this application and with minimal changes, it will work. Okay, so that was um, indoor routing. Next, let's look at Maps app. Um, oh, sorry, I wanted to talk about it first. So Maps app is, um, it's actually four apps in one. It is built with uh, Xamarin forms and WPF. So it's WPF app and then UWP, iOS, and Android that are uh, built with Xamarin forms. It does place search, geocoding, reverse geocoding, routing, directions. Um, it has a base map switcher, a portal, excuse me, a portal item switcher and OAuth to authentication. So that's one of the things we've heard a lot from our users, authentication is hard. Uh, these apps show you how to use, do OAuth and there's another one that does integrated Windows authentication. Okay, now let me switch. So this is a WPF version of it. 
in the interest of time, I will not show you all of them. Um, so searching um, uh, it does routing. Of course, I have to sign in because routing is uses credit. And I got uh, routing from my current location to whatever I picked on, uh, over there. I have, um, let's see if reverse, um, there it goes. So I don't know if you noticed, I tapped on the screen and I kind of held it and it did a reverse geocode. And it pulled the location. Um, I am signed in. I can change the base map that I'm using and I can look at my web maps that I have and I can load a, a web map. So I have a lot of them, wow. Okay, I just made this recently, so let's just load this. It's kind of a heavy one, maybe it wasn't the best idea. Okay. Try this one, it's a little lighter. Okay. Um, if I sign out of the application, it clears uh, my data. I can still change the base map, I can still do all the stuff. Um, so, none of these apps are extremely complex, right? They do a couple of things, but they show you how to glue several things together. Data collection is much more complex, but this, this is not very complex, right? Okay. So for an even simpler app, the offline map book. So this is a WPF app only. It is offline and it uses mobile map packages. It's for, it's read only, it's for the people who want to uh, download a map and then go in the field and be able to look at it, you know, in an offline mode and do an identify and do a, a you know, have a couple of bookmarks, but, but not a lot with it. Um, it also does locate, uh, it has a table of contents that's coming from the toolkit, and this is the one that has both portal authentication or integrated Windows authentication. There's a setting that you can change if you want to use one or the other. So let's look at that one real quick. So when the app first starts, if you don't have the web map, the, the uh, offline map book downloaded, uh, I'm sorry, the mobile map package downloaded, it asks you to download, it's already there. This mobile map package in this case has three different maps in it. So it just listed them next to each other. If you had 17, it would list you 17. If I click on one of them, it shows me the area that I have downloaded and I can identify and I get information about the feature that I identified. I can uh, look at bookmarks. I can look at the um, legend, well, table of contents in this case, and turn things on and off. And I can do a locate. So let's say I'm looking for a specific waterline, or maybe I'm looking for an address. This is a, the mobile map package has a composite locator inside of it that was built with a mobile map package. That's how this, this locate functionality works and then I can clear everything. So again, not a complex application, but an application that allows you how to glue identify and locator and mobile map packages and all of that together. And the authentication. Okay. And last but not least, the data collection app. So. This is, I call it cross-platform ready. And what I mean by that is that the code, the app is WPF only right now, but the code is separated. So the business logic is in a shared project, whereas the UI is in a WPF project. So when I'm ready to add another platform to it, I can just add the UI and find, you know, and, and 
tap into the business logic without having to rewrite any of that. Um, if you saw the plenary this morning and the data collection application that for iOS, this is the same thing, but it's the .NET version. So it does online and offline mode with bidirectional sync. Um, you can query both feature tables and related tables. You can edit uh, both feature tables and related tables. It does identify. Um, the information is displayed using pop-ups. So it's using the pop-up manager from the um, API. And the authentication is, again, OAuth 2. So let's also look at that real quick. Okay. And now I'm going to show you another fun feature of this application, and th that is the fact that it's configurable, and as I was doing a different demo earlier on, I configured it to work with the Farms and Farmers Market web map. So the app is set up to work with that right now, but that's not what I want to show you. So you get an extra demo of, demo of me changing the configuration to work back with the sample data set. So the configuration for the, file, for the application is in the settings file in the uh, roaming folder. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And I want this web map ID, which is the web map ID from the tree data set. Uh, that's the sample data set that the application comes with. And this is where my web map URL is. And it's set to something else because I was doing that demo. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to restart this application. Ta-da. That's how easy it is to switch a web map inside this application. Um, so now that I have the proper data set in here, um, I can click on a tree and identify it. It brings me attribute information about the tree and it also brings me related information from related tables. This specific data set has a one-to-many and a many-to-one relationship. The many-to-one is the species relationship, so, uh, and the one-to-many is the inspections. Notice that both the inspections, both the one-to-many relationship and the feature are editable. So I can click on the tree and now I'm able to edit information about it. So let's say I, um, I don't know, this is a domain, there are no high voltage wires, and I save that. Um, I can also um, add a new tree if I wanted to. I can zoom in into this area and select to add a tree somewhere. It's asking me to log in when I add the tree. Because, and the reason it's asking me to log in and to, when I add the tree and it's not asking me to log in when I edited the tree is because this specific data set has a custom workflow that populates the address. The geocoding is, does not require, does not cost credits, right? You can do geocoding without having to log in. But there is a setting in runtime where if you want to store that address, you're not just finding out, oh, okay, that's where that is done. You actually want to store that address. If you store that address and you set that flag to yes, that you're storing the address, that is, requires a login. So that's why I was being prompted for a login. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save, and there's my tree. Um, we have only five minutes left, so let's do it real quick. So I can work offline if I want to. When I first say I want to work offline, it's asking me to where I want to download my uh, data. I'm gonna put it in this Dev Summit folder. And it says, you know, select the region of the map to take offline. I'm going to hit download and it's starting to download the data. Now, as this is downloading, Let's go back to the presentation. So that was data collection. Now, what's coming next from open source apps? In the immediate future, the um, 
open so the data collection app will have attachments added. The work's already done for that. We're just waiting for update five to be released to release the attachments because there were a couple of issues that we ran into that required fixing. So those fixes will be released with update five and so will the attachments portion of this application. You noticed in the plenary earlier that they, Eli showed attachments. So both the iOS and the .NET application will have the attachments functionality available as soon as update five is released. Um, we're also going to update all of the apps, all of the open source apps to update five. Like I said, these apps are maintained and tested, so we'll update them to update five, we will, or 100.5, I guess I should call it. We will test them, make sure they work, and then we will uh, merge the code into master and make it available for you. Okay, for the remainder of the year, for the .NET team, um, the offline map book, like I mentioned, it is WPF and it is not platform ready. So we're working on restructuring that application to pull out all the business logic into a .NET standard project and separate it. it it's separated right now, but it's not completely, right? So we'll completely separate it from the view logic and make that application uh, cross-platform ready because we know there are some people that have asked for a iOS version of it, but they don't want to use the iOS version, they want a Xamarin iOS because they're .NET developers. Um, and the next step is add a UWP version to the data collection application. So what you are looking at is WPF. We will add it UWP. I know it's kind of the same thing, but it will show you how to how to do that. It, Again, these are these are for you to you know to sh to see how to do, um, and WPF is kind of slowly going away, right? The new WP, I mean, Windows Seven is not going to be supported for much longer, and that's what WPF was needed for. Um, and um, a new app for the year is going to be the nearby places. Uh, there is a JavaScript version of it already released. There's also an Android version released, and. Um, we, you can take a look at the JavaScript version and kind of get an idea of what the .NET app is going to be like. All of these apps that we're building for the different platforms, we strive as much as possible to keep them similar in functionality. So if you see an app in iOS that does several things, you can know for sure that as soon as that's coming out for .NET, it will do basically the same stuff. Now, sometimes things are not possible, right? JavaScript will not have an offline mapbook app because you can't do offline in JavaScript. That's a limitation of the API. But as long as the API supports it, the apps will be similar and will have the same functionality. And the download is still going over here. I was going to switch to it, but it's still going. Um, any questions? No? Okay. Um, please go ahead and, and take the survey if you, when you have the time, and I appreciate you being here today. <laughs>